Good evening. Welcome to the tent. I'm so glad that you're here. We draped the back wall for you, so at least you feel like it's in a tent. So, so far I haven't heard any real complaints, at least not about the temperature tonight. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm glad that you're here. Glad you got the word that we needed to move it up. So, let's see, David, have you got, got some of your team coming? They're to? gathering. They're gathering. <laughs> gathering. The gathering of eagles. Well, there's... There's one, one eaglet behind you. Did y'all know that's my daughter? Yeah. yeah. So I know, you, I know you heard Jeremy today telling the story. I was in the car revisiting that whole thing. How many of you heard Jeremy today? Yeah, yeah. And I said, Jeremy, really levitated? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> But I tell you what, that boy was never late coming home again. <laughs> oh my goodness, how much fun. But Aubrey, um, <laughs> okay, we won't go there. <laughs> All I can say is I saw that creature more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all stop that, you make it sound terrible. <laughs> Oh man, I am not using you for my PR department. <laughs> Jeremy said, Aubrey got in trouble so much, even he began to feel sorry for her. So, <laughs> and look at you now. It worked. It worked. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I was sitting there thinking, though, Jeremy, not too long after that, that he was telling you today. Uh, we got a new youth pastor here at the church and he took Jeremy out for dinner. He said, you know, when to get to know the pastor's son a little better. Jeremy was a teenager and he said, so Jeremy, tell me a little bit about yourself. And Jeremy said, well, <clears throat> I don't do anything wrong. And he said, really, really? Well, that's kind of a strange thing for somebody to say. Why, why do you say you don't do anything wrong? He said, well, I tried it. But my mom talks to God and he talks back and it just never worked out for me. <laughs> but see, you had him, you had him that knew that and I just tested the theory. He just kept, and yeah. kept, and kept and, and it kept testing to yeah. be true. Yeah, and you found out though, right? Yes. Yes, that's right, that's right. I have mom. the dents to prove it. <laughs> the dents. So, <laughs> oh, never mind. So, <laughs> So this is a great way to start because in Isaiah 56, 7, it says, these things I bring to my holy mountain. Welcome to the holy mountain here. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. You know, one of the things that I've noticed over the years, watched a lot of things, been around long enough to see things. I felt a little bit like Brother Hagen. He said, you know, after you've been around a long time, you see things go in cycles. And you, you expect, well, that, you know, that'll, that'll move along and something else will come through. But one of the things I've noticed that began to really take hold of the prayer and worship uh, scene, and by that I mean the, the, the way it seemed most people were being attracted to. And while there's a lot of good qualities about it, I noticed there wasn't a lot of joy. Not a lot of joy. But the Bible tells us that if you're gonna worship God, you're gonna to have to worship Him in, in what? In spirit and in truth. And what does Romans tell us? That the kingdom of God is meat and drink, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He's not sad, and he's not down, and he's not depressed. Now, I understand, I understand that there are things, you know, that there are some things that are very sobering. And uh, when you get over into a prayer very much, there are some things that are intense. And there are some places in God that are so focused, you know, but none of that should move the joy of the Lord out. The thing of it is, we have to take hold of joy by faith as we pray. And our music and our worship should reflect that. People think though that joy can only be expressed with, with a certain tempo 
or, or certain songs that just are labeled, you know, about joy or this is, these are the joy songs. No, joy, if it's in the Holy, if you're in the Holy Ghost and you're worship, and we have to be if we're really worshiping, then it's got to be present no matter what. So I got a hold of myself on this some time ago, some years ago, I got a hold of my, did you ever get a hold of yourself? I've gotten a hold of myself. It's easier if you get a hold of yourself than, than other people. So anyway, just thinking, you know what? I'm going to start practicing drawing up joy no matter what I'm singing about. So David, you guys, you guys help me just a little bit. Okay. Just in a normal, let's just for a moment, let's sing. I, I may be giving, I think I had everybody do this the other day. So I may be, can't think of anything else right now, but you know, they're one of the most wonderful songs in the whole of the church in English is Oh the Blood. Yeah. So just one time through, just give us a chorus of just Oh the Blood. Just some. Oh the Blood, how Jesus, oh the Blood, how Jesus, oh this the other night. It's probably why it's stuck in my head, but I want to sing it again, but I want you to smile while you're singing it and watch what happens. Now, I know you think about the blood and of course that comes from the blood that our minds go to, the cross, the crucifixion, the blood that was shed. And that was anything you might think, anything but joyous, except what does the word say? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. If he can endure the cross because of the joy that was set before him, not only can we have joy as we reflect on the cross, but the blood that Jesus shed at that time is ever before the presence of God ever liveth. And it's crying out mercy for you. It's crying out healing for you. And so no matter what, that's a good news. That's a good report. So you guys can step out if you want, but I want just everybody. And when you, and, and you say, well, I just feel like that's such a put on. Well, yeah, put that on. Amen. Now I can't see your face is good enough to check to see if you're being obedient, but I can see your eyes and I can feel you. So I want you to notice the difference and see if it doesn't lift not only your awareness of joy, but see if it doesn't lift uh, the whole presence and the, the whole of your worship. I mean, you don't have to change anything except that. Nothing, don't have to change anything you did. We don't, we don't have to go to a, like a two beater or four beater or anything like that. Just, but in this, we're just gonna, you guys step up and we're gonna be, we're gonna, about the blood, okay? Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. But you can put the camera on me a little bit and let's do that again. Did you notice any difference? Did you notice it? And so I want to do it again, David. And then uh, once you do that again, then let's take it up. Let's, let's modulate a little with it, okay? And let's let that and the smile on our face take us somewhere, okay? Okay, here we go.
tell us about joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. Now, here's on the other side of that, for part of the problem sometimes when you get a song that our, our heads and we automatically go, oh, that's a joy song. We quit, we just let the song be the song and we can jump up and down and clap our hands, but that doesn't mean joy's in it. Why? Because joy, you know, maybe, maybe you, there's excitement in it. Maybe you can even get happy, but joy is much deeper and goes much higher and is much stronger than happy. We can get happy in Jesus for sure. But joy is a spiritual force that's produced by the abiding presence of the Spirit within, but it, the Holy Spirit within, but it is a product of your own spirit for the fruit of the Spirit, the abiding Spirit, your spirit within by the Holy Spirit is, and I love this, the passion which says it's the uh, love which produces the fruit of. Joy is a product of love. And so when we by faith are pulling out the joy and songs that are joyful, man, that, it, it's even stronger and, and more, uh, more connecting because it helps us even physically to engage in that. Yeah. So when we have, the point is using our faith and you can't use your faith if you're not conscious of it. And we can become so practiced at these things in our prayers, even in our praying. Sometimes I see people pray and I mean, I can be intense in prayer like everybody else, but sometimes in our praying, if you look at, <laughs> you know, it's all like, mm. and people think that intensity of prayer is because of, you know, muscles and are loud and get loud. Well, prayer could be loud, but that's not, loud doesn't define prayer. Hallelujah. And if we are people of faith, yes. I believe we are. If we are people of faith, then we have an expectation of a response from God when we respond to him. And what is our response? Even our request of him are to be in response to his promises. So that when he says, ask whatever you will and I'll give it to you. Ask according to my will and I'll give it to you. Whatever you ask according to my will, I'll give it to you. The expectation is, hey, in my asking, I've got the answer coming. Now, who don't want to get happy about that? Who don't want to be joyful about that? So joy is an expression of faith. Joy says, hey, I believe what he said. Joy said, I know what he said. I believe what he said. So no matter how big my situation is or the problem or the question or the need that I'm presenting, I already can have an abiding joy because I have expectation of his response. Do I get a witness? Amen. 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 Okay. I don't know what to do now. Right, let's do this one. There is power. by faith to locate joy, you'll find that it has a sound. And it's a sound you not only hear with your outer ears, you hear it with your inner ears, but when it's on the inside, you connect with it and begin to flow with it. It'll do something. And you, then you can find out you can get in that place with or without David Ellis. 
or a singer or a CD. Hallelujah. Amen.